Today we're going to be replacing the wheel hub and bearing assembly for the rear wheel on a 2015 Subaru Legacy. That's the new one. We'll be getting the old one off in just a minute. This is a repair that anybody can do if you are if you got a garage and you're willing to turn a wrench. It's really not that difficult. And these are the tools you're going to need. All right, you're going to need a breaker bar, a torque wrench. I got a ratchet here for lighter duty work. A uh, soft hammer, maybe a regular old steel hammer. 14 millimeter socket. Uh, this is a wheel socket. I forget which one. Yeah, three quarter inch. A uh, small screwdriver that mm, you might be willing to throw away when it's done because it's going to get banged up. Uh, a 32 millimeter socket. This is for the main uh, hub nut. And of course, the replacement um, hub assembly with bearing. I also have a puller uh, that I didn't need for the other side, but I'm probably going to need it for this side. And this uh, allows you to pull the uh, pull the hub off of the spline. So let's get started. First, put on some good music because you're going to be here a little while. And you jack up the car. And get it nice and high and then put it on a jack stand. You just take off the wheel. And just move it out of the way. Next step, we're gonna remove this brake caliper. Now down here, there's an electrical connector for the um, parking brake, and you're just gonna remove it by giving it a little squeeze. There's a little lever there, and it just comes right off like that. Now you're gonna need a 14 inch socket, a 14 inch, 14 millimeter socket, and there's a nut here, sorry, a bolt here, and a bolt down here. And it's gonna, those two, if you remove those, this whole thing will lift off. I just remembered a little tip I wanted to share with you. Um, once you take this off, the uh, hose is going to be the only thing that's connecting it to the car, and you don't want it to support its weight of the, by the hose. So I've just got here an old uh, coat hanger, and I'm going to loop it over the, uh, the spring, the suspension spring here, and have this little thing right here ready to put the caliper on once I get it undone. Bend that a little out of the way. All right, you'll see how this works in just a second. All right, got both nuts out. Get this thing ready. I'm just gonna work it off of the disc there. And then, like I said, the hose is the only thing holding it now. Put the coat hanger through that hole there, kind of tighten it down. And now the weight is supported by the coat hanger and it doesn't strain the hose. Next step, you just lift the brake rotor right off. It just comes right off and set it aside. Now, before I started working on this, I did some research and looked at other videos and such. And on uh, some of the older models, you actually had a cotter pin through here, keeping this bolt from uh, this nut from turning. Here, for whatever reason, probably to save money, they just indented the nut there, and it's really hard to get out. I use this screwdriver, which, like I said, I'm ready to throw it away afterward. Just tapped it in there until I could get a good bite on the nut, which I obviously didn't there. And once I was able to bend that little notch out, the nut would turn a lot more freely. Once I got it started with a screwdriver, I turned over to a punch because the metal's a lot harder. I was able to get it in there and bend the, bend the thing out. Now I didn't actually bend the punch, I just went to, uh, graduated up to the next size 
and I was eventually able to get it out. I think I missed a size in here, but you get the idea. I'm working with this, this will probably take you five minutes or so just to get this nut bent out. Really would have been easier if there had been a cotter pin, but I guess the Subaru engineers have their reasons. Now comes the fun part, getting this nut off. Now this thing is on there super tight and this hub spins freely, right? So you got to use something. I'm using just a, uh, I think it's a old uh, water, water uh, system <laughs> bar here to uh, keep these lugs, uh, these, yeah, these bolts from, from turning. You just wedge it in there like that. Don't worry about damaging them. You're not going to reuse this thing. The new, uh, the new hub has new, uh, bolts on it. And you take your 32 millimeter socket, put it on there and go to town. You may have to stand on it. I had to do that yesterday. Gonna, gonna cut away for a moment here. Yep, had to stand on it to get it loose. Hopefully yours will be a little easier. Maybe a little penetrating oil might have done some good there beforehand. But here we are. All right, got the hub nut off. Now we're going to take off the bolts that hold the hub on. There are four of them. There's one here, one here, one here, and one here. I'll say so yeah, we got a couple here and they're accessible from the back back around here it's almost impossible to see them so you're gonna to have to go by feel these also take the 14 millimeter socket that we used earlier so we're just gonna find our way back there find the bolt put it on there put it on our breaker bar oh yeah and try not to <laughs> try not to mess with the caliper all right uh, okay that broke loose fairly easily reposition the socket there we go at this point, I'm going to switch over to my ratchet, make it a little easier to get some progress here. Let's see where it is. That, there it is. Yeah, in fact, i got to hold it. I think actually I can take this off by hand at this point. Yeah. So I'll do this for all four. There are two over here and two on the other side. And then we'll get to our puller. There we go, got all four bolts out. And now we're gonna to need to get this spline separated from the hub. And for that, we're gonna use our handy dandy puller here. All right, first you just take a couple of the uh, wheel nuts, put it on like this. Doesn't have to be on all the way, but it should be on pretty evenly. I'm just gonna take it down to Right down to there, right down so it's kind of snug. You got on all three points here. Oh yeah, you got to make sure the, the puller you get is sized right for your wheel. So you got to look at that, look online and see what, what your wheel needs. So now I'm going to finger tight this down to the point where the pin, you now I'm going to reposition the camera here. Hang on a second. All right, you're going to tighten this down finger tight so that the pin is right there on the, on the hub, I'm oh, sorry, on the, on the spline. Now, for me, I got the exact same <laughs> socket that I use for the nuts. Put it right here. Get your ratchet. And just gently kind of evenly tighten it down. And there we go. What that just did is it evenly separated the spine from the hub. Now, I can probably, probably just take it off by hand. Now, once it breaks loose, it's pretty easy. Let's see. Mm, listen to that Chet Atkins. So good. All right, let's see. Yeah, all right, look at that. And just work this off. There we go. All right. Now, this is that uh, electrical connector that we saw earlier, right down there, right there. Um, it's connected to this, uh, this bracket that is mounted to this plate here and this just all wiggles right off it's just sort of set in there whoa ho, ho, look at that that was easy and there is your old hub ready to be replaced all right in my case this looks kind of dirty in here i'm gonna go ahead and just brush it out and put a little bit of um, 
bearing grease on here just to help it slide on. Not much, just, just enough. And uh, then we'll put the new hub on. That's not so bad, actually, right there. Just a little bit of surface corrosion. Looks like this got serious water on it at some point. Not sure what from. Who knows? There's weather down here. I live in Houston, and we get a lot of rain. That's probably that. All right. All right, I got it cleaned with a very thin layer of grease, most of which I just wiped off. That was uh, barren grease I used. Um, just for, like I said, mostly to clean more than anything. I'm going to take the new hub and slip it into this bracket, just like the old one was. Let's see if I get that nice and straight. It's kind of, kind of got to work it in there. There we go. And then, you know, this can bend a little bit, not bend, but just rotate a little bit. And then I'm just going to slip that on there, work it slowly, gently, kind of get it through and push but not too hard line it up push. there we go you see there's the spline coming right through i can actually pull it a little bit all right and now we're going to put those four bolts back on all right we got all four mounting bolts all and i'm going to torque them down to 48 foot pounds that's where i that's what i found on the internet subaru website Super Enthusiast website. There we go. Do that on all four. All right, now we're gonna get this nut tightened down using our big old 32 millimeter socket here. And we're gonna torque it down to 177 foot pounds. And this time, instead of letting this bar rest right up against those nice new nuts, I'm gonna put some little wood, pieces of wood there to, to cushion the blow. So I got my bar placed there and you see I got one piece of wood right there. I'm gonna put the other one right there. And when I tighten this down, the bolts are gonna press against the wood rather than the bar. This one, this one, this one are gonna be free. And that way it does not damage the threads on the bolts. All right, now I'm gonna to torque it down. All right, I got it torqued down, and now we got a, that old notch was right there. It doesn't really line up anymore. I'm gonna take my punch here and just create a new notch there. This may take a minute or two, and try not to slip like I just did. There we go. Not so bad. I have a feeling after. <laughs> If I have to replace this again, I may have to replace the nut again, but that's all right. It's doing the job. All right, gonna put the brake loader back on. It slips right on like that. And then we got our caliper over here. Let's get the bolts handy. All right, got the bolts. Uh, take it off the coat hanger. All right. Slip it carefully onto the rotor. It'll be a little difficult. There we go. Line the holes up. There we go. Get the top one started. A little finger tight. And then you can get the bottom one too. All right, got those tightened down. Now let's reconnect this little electrical connector down here and clip and let's don't forget to take this out of here yeah, i think that's trash now all right looks like we're ready to put the wheel back on okay got the wheel back on i'm going to take it off the jack stand now i had the other side jacked up too just to make it more even Beautiful. And tighten down the lug nuts. And that's how we do that. All right. 
I hope you enjoyed watching. I will torque these down after I get off camera, by the way. But yeah, hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you learned something. And good luck to you. Take care, everybody.